Ruchem Aboim, welcome everyone. Uh, again, thank you for coming to our house and attending the lecture. Um, this week on my thoughts, I'd like to examine the miracle that God Almighty orchestrated this week. You know, the whole world watched. We had a front row seat to the event. Somehow, with all the security present, a lone gunman was able to shoot the former president of the United States. God blinded the eyes of all those whose responsibility it was to protect him. Blind, but why? This is much like the scenario with 9-11. You know, where men of Middle Eastern descent wanted to learn how to fly a plane, but curiously, they expressed no interest in learning how to land or take off. This should have, been, have alerted the authorities that something was amiss, yet God Almighty blinded their vision and they did not connect the dots until after the tragedy was perpetrated. Blind, but why? The same thing can be said about October 7th in Israel. The Mossad, the Israeli Secret Service, is considered to be the most premier intelligent agency in the world. Yet, somehow they missed all the signs which allowed the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust to occur. With all their vision, somehow they were blinded and they did not act on the intelligence. We are now asking the same question, blind, but why? You know, 9-11 changed the world as we know it today. It changed all the dynamics of the Middle East. Before 9-11, Iran was in a perpetual war with Iraq. They were too busy fighting each other to cause the world any problems. However, once the United States attacked Iraq and took down Saddam Hussein, well, this allowed all the evil of Iran to raise its ugly head. Terrorism was now unleashed on the world. 9-11 should have been seen as a wake-up call from God Almighty, our Father in Heaven, telling us that the time of the Messiah is near and that we all need to get our acts together. Somehow the world is able to forget all the lessons they learned so quickly. Instead, we have managed to go deeper down the rabbit hole. Then after the massacre of October 7th, God orchestrated a scenario which affected all the Jews throughout the world, not just in Israel. This event allowed anti-Semitism to raise its ugly head once again. Somehow, the victim has once again become the perpetrator. Overnight, we have been taken back to the 1930s with the rise of Hitler, Yamak Shemot, and his dream of total annihilation of all Jews from the river to the sea. Will we ever learn? Our greatest strength is prayer. When we cry out to our benevolent Father in heaven, he listens and he responds. Now, it may not follow the order of our request or our timetable. Other times, the best answer that God can respond with is no. So, no matter what we perceive as the correct answer, we must know and believe that we are always in good hands when it is He who is embracing us. Trump's life was saved by God Almighty itself. All the security personnel that were employed to protect him dropped the ball. If not for the mercy of God, Trump would have died from a bullet wound to the head. With his death, well, the whole world would have been thrown into bedlam not just the United States. In fact, it's frightening to even think of it. Since I believe that nothing is an accident, the fact that Trump was shot through his right ear is really very interesting. In the Torah, there are three rituals that are associated with the person's right ear. When Moshe Rabbeinu, when Moses, our teacher, inducted Aaron and his four sons into the priesthood, as part of the ceremony, he applied both the blood and oil onto their right ears. The Torah commands when a person has been diagnosed with the spiritual disease, which is referred to as leprosy, a part of their purification ritual, that part of it is the blood of their guilt offering is placed on their right ear. What I find even more coincidental is that the bullet pierced Trump's right ear. There is a law in the portion of Mishpatim, in the book of uh, Exodus, pardon me, in Exodus, correct? Mishpatim is actually by Yikra in reference to a Jewish slave. A Jewish slave serves for only six years, and then he goes free. However, if the slave decides that he loves his master, 
and that he does not want his freedom, and that he would prefer to stay with his master. The Torah requires that the master must take him to the Jewish court, and there the master is required to pierce the right ear of his Jewish slave. With that act, the Jewish slave becomes a slave to his master forever, which the Torah tells us is until the Jubilee year, whenever that would occur. Now Rashi asked a question on this verse, which ear does the master pierce? He then replies that it is the right ear. Rashi continues and asks, where do we learn it from? He answers from the ritual that allows the leper to re-enter society. There, in the portion of Mitzorah, where it states, the tip of the right ear that is to be cleansed. Then Rashi continues with another question. Why was the ear selected to be pierced rather than any other limb in the body? Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai answers, the ear that heard at Mount Sinai, which is stated in the portion of Behar in the book of Leviticus. The words for unto me the children of Israel are servants. Yet he went and acquired a new master for himself. Let his ear be pierced. So just as the Torah commands that a Jewish slave can only become a slave forever after he has first served his initial sentence, six years, it is only after he decides to stay with his master rather than accept his freedom that the master is commanded to pierce his ear. So too with President Trump. God Almighty has pierced his ear as he is attempting to serve a second term as the 47th President of the United States of America a position that he will retain in some form for life. Mr. Trump could have been shot in any other part of his body, and the tragedy would have been the same. But the fact that God Almighty had him move his head at the last second, which allowed the bullet to graze the tip of his right ear, is not an accident. So I believe that it has made Mr. Trump a servant to God Almighty forever. In his speech to the convention, he repeated that he realized that he was saved by God Almighty. You know, the only prayer that we recite twice daily, which is Torahic, is the Shema Yisroh. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. The opening words of this prayer is Shema, hear. The English word hear has within it the word ear. The letter H corresponds to the Hebrew letter He. This is a letter in Hebrew that is used by itself to allude to God Almighty. It is also the eighth letter in the English alphabet. Eight is a number in Judaism that alludes to something that is above this physical world, something that's supernatural. So you might wonder what connection exists between God Almighty, the English alphabet, and Hebrew letters. If you take the first letter of the name God, G-O-D, G, and count from the letter A, G is the seventh letter in the alphabet. If you count to the letter O, it is the 15th letter in the English alphabet. The letter D is the fourth letter in the alphabet. So 7 plus 15 plus 4 equals 26. Well, 26 is the gematria, the numerical value of God's ineffable name, the holiest of all of his names. In fact, it is a name that we never articulate as it is written. We always substitute the name Hashem, which translates as the name. These numbers, 7, 15, and 4, are not just random numbers. You know, the number 7 alludes to the seven days of creation. The number 15 alludes to the actual creation of heaven and earth. Our sages tell us that God Almighty created the upper worlds with the Hebrew letter Yud, which has a gematria, a numerical value of 10. He then created the lower world with a hay, which has a gematria numerical value of five. Both were created on the first day of creation, which equals 15. The number four connects with the Kabbalistic belief that God Almighty created four spiritual worlds. They are the worlds of emanation, creation, formation, in addition to this lower world which we inhabit, the world of action. The order of these numbers actually seems backwards. Well, not really. Since you see in Hebrew language, we read from right to left. Therefore, the order would be reversed, starting with four, then 15, and then seven. First, God created the four upper spiritual worlds. Next, he created the heavens and, and then the earth, 15. 
Then he continued by placing all that he had created into their proper place during each of the seven days of creation, equals 26. The fact that President Trump sustained an injury to his ear, you know, I think it's a wake-up call, not just for him, but for all of us as well. The words in English, silent and listen, both had the exact same letters. This tells us that we all need to listen more and talk less. We need to be inclusive, not exclusive. The ear does not move independent of the head. One of its functions is to serve as a receptacle for information. That information is then transported to the brain which decides whether the information should be filed or discarded. We need to be more discerning as to what and how we use that information. I find it interesting that the only letter in the English language that is capitalized in the middle of a word is the letter I. You know, the name Trump is similar to the word triumph. One of the differences between these two words is the letter I. I believe that before this incident, the biggest challenge that Mr. Trump faced was his own ego. The capital letter I dominated his personality. Humility is not something that we are born with. Humility is something that we learn through our own experiences, the lessons of life. As I've said many times before, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. Let us all hope and pray that God Almighty inspires him on how to best use the letter properly so that he can add the letter to his name and triumph. He can try with more oomph. I'm certain that God Almighty will reward all of his efforts on behalf of the world with great success. The world never needed him more. So what is my answer to the question as to blinded but why? Well, I'm not a prophet, but it would seem that God Almighty has given President Trump a special mission. I believe that it is not an accident that God, our Father in Heaven, has saved him from certain death. We have a belief that it is God Almighty himself who chooses people that possess the power to rule, such as kings or presidents. As King Solomon, Shlom HaMelech stated in Proverbs in Mishlei, Lev Malachim Biad Hashem, the heart of kings is directed by God. In fact, we, we recite a blessing when we see a ruling monarch. The blessing declares that blessed are you God who shares his glory with mortal man. After what Mr. Trump has experienced, you know, one could not blame him for thinking, why do I need all this drama in my life? He has all the money in the world, a beautiful wife, six successful children, ten beautiful grandchildren, magnificent properties all over the world. The list goes on and on. Why do we want to carry on? After all, he's 77 years old. Retire. Live your life out in peace and tranquility. But I truly believe that Mr. Trump cares, and more than that, that he is willing to do whatever it takes to make the system work, not for some, but for everyone, no exceptions. I believe that President Trump has earned God's benevolence due to the kindness that is extended to God's chosen people and to the nation that he has served so proudly. President Trump has always been a friend to the state of Israel in the past. He demonstrated that support in action, not just in words. For example, when he commuted the sentence of Shlomo Mordechai Rubashkin, or when he recognized Jerusalem as the capital of the state of Israel and moved the American embassy to Jerusalem. Many American presidents had talked about doing so in the past, but none were actually willing to do it. It was under his administration that the iconic Abraham Accord was signed. God Almighty has protected Mr. Trump, and we pray that he will continue to do so. You know, one person tried to end President Trump's days. One God in heaven decided to extend his days. Our hope and prayer is that President Trump will view each and every day of his life as a mandate from God Almighty, that in some way he has survived to be a part of the puzzle that will usher in the period of peace and prosperity to the United States of America, the state of Israel, and the whole world with the coming of Mashiach Sukeno may come quickly and in our time. Let us all pray that God Almighty ends the war in Gaza with the complete defeat and destruction of Hamas and all the evil that exists in the world today. 
May he bring home all the hostages safely, cure the sick and injured, comfort all the mourners, and return all of our brave IDF soldiers safely, led by Mashiach Sukainu, quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for listening. May God bless you and yours with all this good. May you be safe, healthy, and happy. Again, please, if you have not yet done so, push the um, the button for like and also uh, for subscribe. subscribe. Thank you. And uh, please share with your friends. Again, God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Have a Shabbat Shalom.